see the light and more. I want to introduce you to the Memphis Metaphysical Spiritual Fair here at the Agri Center International, I believe it's called, in Memphis, Tennessee. We just begin to do this annually, hopefully. Uh, we used to do them before and things get changed, life happens, but this is kind of what's happening if you scan around look at some of the vendors. Uh, you see lots of stones, lots of healers, lots of uh, readers. A lot of fun. Expands you inside, life gets good. Check it out. It's great. Here's a dear friend of mine, brother in spirit, Mr. Kevin Hutchins. He's the artist of this fantastic work over here. How's it going? <laughs> Check out his work on the wall over here. I've been doing art for all my life, but you know, to show about 15 years. And you're doing what you love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How's that for you? Loving it. <laughs> yeah. oh, right? Yeah. All right? And I love doing it. So yeah. that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, brother. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you. <laughs> this is my vending booth, Center of Light Radio. I'm an author, best selling author. This is the Divine Principle right here. This book here is my best seller. And. This book over here is about my experience to go see this divine man who came to me in a dream, asked me to come to India, and I said, sure, I don't know how to do it. He said, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. Two weeks later, I get a phone call <laughs> from a lady I've never met. It says, Keith, my name is Debbie. I heard through the grapevine you want to go to India. And I said, yes. She said, Keith, my flight attendant. I heard you didn't have the money, you didn't know how to do it. And because I'm a flight attendant, I have a companion pass for the year that is about to expire. And I would not like that to happen knowing you want to go to India to see this holy man. Can I give you a first class round trip ticket? <laughs> so three months later, I got on a plane and jetted all the way to India to experience more miracles in two weeks than a collective amount of people had seen in a lifetime by being in the proximity of that holy man right here, Sati Sai Baba. I also host a radio show every Monday night, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, called Center of Light Radio. This is a banner back here kind of portraying what I do with that. It's a metaphysical slash spiritual radio show. It lasts one hour. This is my third year. I have over three million listenership. We just joined with iHeartRadio. Wow. So things are expanding at a rate that I'm happy about but it's overwhelming because it, the miracles just keep happening. Speaking of miracles and transformation, today, um, August 6, 2017, shortly, I'm gonna be doing a presentation on radical transformation. I have the ability, it may come across cocky, but it's not meant that way at all, but whatever works, right? To go inside of you, in about 15 seconds and expand you, split you open. And the purpose for that is to give you a glimpse of the hyper-reality, an expanded awareness state of reality. So what is the purpose of that? Well, it's because we are actually larger than we appear or seem or think we are. And once I give you a glimpse of being in that space today for the presentation, for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna to begin to give you insight information, powerful information, that will help you to live in that space ongoingly. It may take some work to keep reminding yourself to be in it, but after a while, like anything, it becomes a habit. And by default, you get to stay in that experience. So the point is, like when you work out with weights, you lift weights to expand your muscle mass. When you begin to work with your awareness, your awareness mass begins to grow, and then you will live in that space constantly. But the idea is once you begin to seat yourself by default and have a new disposition, disposition of an expanded awareness, 
we always thought that this is what seeing looks like until the veil is removed they go ah this is what seeing is so seeing is not the eyes seeing can be the eyes but seeing can be the ears seeing can be with your feeling base by being aware of what is around you and when you reach this state of ongoing present awareness miracles will begin to pop out into your experience like fireflies in the night i've been doing this a very long time so um i'm also going to be uh, video recording this, filming this as a documentary, my presentation. So that will be available. You can send me contact at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com about you wanting uh, this presentation. I'd be more than happy to get back to you and put that in your hands to see you open up, expand, and have your life be one filled with absolute bliss. See you soon. Thank you. I think I am ready, my brother. <laughs> so we're going to go have this presentation talk and some fun and some expansion. Follow me. Sky opened up outside. Always take what I say in the context of my intention. It doesn't mean anything else but a reaching out to you, a reaching in from me as a gesture to help not only myself, because when I do this work, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Radical transformation. Something happens to me uh, while I'm doing it. If you're familiar with my Facebook live feeds, you would see that. So what I'm saying is, as I do this presentation, the person you're looking at now is going to change. You're going to see a fire. And this is not a bragging point. This is something that truly happens to me that I would like to see graduate or grow or bellow inside of you. What that fire is, people have referred to it as God. It doesn't matter to me what you call it. I really don't care. It doesn't matter what you call it. It really doesn't care. But what it would like to see is for you to tap into that part of yourself that is connected to everything, hence radical transformation. Radical transformation meaning right now, yes, there's work involved and it takes time. It all depends on the sincerity and the passion of the person who is listening to this uh, presentation or any aspect of your life that you want to move through, graduate, open up to. So it's all about your passion. It's all about your sincerity. So as I do this presentation, You'll see me get hypercharged. You'll see me, I may even look different. You may see something moving. Uh, I go into this expanded state of reality, and it's not the me that I know that is doing it. In fact, I just get to ride the current just like y'all do, as if I'm a participant. There are three things I say often, probably all the time when I do talks. Number one is the truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. It simply does not. We all have beliefs. You ask an eight-year-old child, is Santa Claus real? They'll tell you yes. But as the adult, you know it's not. Now, the spirit of Christmas is, is real, of course. But the analogy of, to an eight -year -old, for an eight-year-old child, Santa Claus is not real in the truth. So likewise, spirituality or just being open to what is the truth, it doesn't need your permission to exist. Though we've been indoctrinated with lots of stuff, useless, meaningless stuff, and you may believe it, it doesn't mean it's true. And it doesn't mean that what you have not learned is not true either. So that's kind of left and right brain, in and out, monkey-minded stuff. And it could be, it could slow you down. So what I'm offering is to get out of all that you were taught. We'll get to some of that here shortly. The truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. 
And you may say, well, Keith, how do you know that what you found is the truth? Because there's something inside that says so beyond my logic. You say, well, Keith, your brain is pretty powerful. Your mind's pretty powerful. What if it's trying to convince you through this feeling? No, 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 no. By the time we come to the end of this presentation, you will see. No, you will see. But you will experience, hopefully that is my goal, that you will experience exactly what I'm talking about. And what you think is right and wrong will dissipate for you. Something else will begin to happen. It's called the Christ. It's called the Phoenix. It's called the Lotus Flower. It's the real you that will begin to step out forward and into your experience. The truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. The other one I always say, in fact, I have it on this iPad as my notes. It's all capped, triple exclamation pointed. Get out of the fight. Get out of the ongoing fight in your life, if there is one. And even if you think there isn't, I invite you, implore, support you into doing the inner research to see if there is a fighting in your life. If you're looking at the news and you think what's going on in the world is terrorism, I get it. I understand it. But if you're in the fight, you're slowing your progress down. If you're into politics and that aspect of it, the yang, 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 it's slowing you down. That's fighting. It's fighting and fighting goes nowhere. In fact, it creates more of a problem. The fight gets bigger. It becomes a lifetime brawl, so to speak. If you're fighting with your loved one, stop it. If you're fighting with yourself, it, because all those things I named before is an internal bickering. It's an internal fighting. You have to get out of the fight. Stop fighting. Just stop fighting. So we have truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. Get out of the fight. These are very, very important to your radical transformation, your spiritual development. Number three, you can water the weed or you can water the plant. And everyone you give your attention to is the one that is going to blossom. It's going to grow. Hence, get out of the fight. If you're worried about the terrorism, if you're worried about this and that, it's pouring the water and nurturing the weed. It's all it's doing. The truth, the plant, doesn't need anyone's permission to exist. So when you begin to nurture those aspects of yourself, it changes very quickly. And this is not some cliché metaphysical thing that I'm just laying on you. I'm telling you this works to a level that, and this has recently started happening in my life, I say in about the last year and a half, when I started doing these Burst of Light live videos, something began to amalgamate inside of me and come inside of me and sit and live. And that's an expanded awareness, and I'm going to be offering that to you today, and it's more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. The truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. Get out of the fight. You can water the weed or the plant. It's your choice. This path of spirituality is not like most people think it to be. It's more radical. It's outrageous. It's huge. It's very small. It's very simple. It's very delicate, it's very powerful, and more beautiful than most people would ever think it to be. It's not about all the cliché spiritual hype, jargon, the vending booths, the psychic fair. That's all cool stuff. That's all entertainment, and it's fun, and people do grow from said experiences. Spirituality, first and foremost... And if you are of this particular belief, no one is here to change your faith or your religion. Again, the truth doesn't need anyone's permission to exist. I say this not because I don't think you're listening, because there's a vibratory experience that happens as I repeat that word. Because it presses home the idea, the very statement, the profound statement, in fact, that the truth does not need anyone's permission to exist. So that means something exists somewhere that we may have know nothing about. Spirituality is not necessary about Jesus. It can be, and that's a beautiful path. Gorgeous, in fact. But it's not about Jesus. Jesus done his work. It's up to us to do ours. <laughs> if you would, try this for me. Point to yourself. If you would, everyone in the audience, point to yourself. Perfect. Okay? Take your hand down. Point to God. 
We know that God lives in each and every person. Jesus said, do not say lo here, nor lo there. Seek the kingdom of God within, within you. Within you. That's it. There's no other lesson. Y'all have a wonderful day. <laughs> there is no other lesson, really. There are different variables of learning. Seek the kingdom of God within you. I'm very, very big on definitions because it takes all the argument out. You can't run away from Webster. Webster will catch you. <laughs> definitions is a book that was created to convey thoughts, concepts, and ideas. Actually, it's a written book to convey telepathy. That's how we understand what each other is thinking by, uttering, by these utterances that create an, a dynamic in us to say, I understand what you're trying to project to me. So when we look at a definition, it's what we collectively agree as our resource, resource for understanding. Definition of omnipresence. God is omnipresent. We've heard that, be it whatever religion you're in. God is omnipresent. What does that really mean? Definition actually says, present in all places at all times. All time. It's in my shirt. It's in this iPad. It's in the vibrations from my voice you're hearing. It's in the you viewing me. It's, it's everything. There's nothing it is not except fear. God does not dwell in fear. Fear is an illusion created by us. If I tell you if God is everything, then how is it that fear is not God? But it's, again, it's the illusion created by us. It's not in, based in any reality whatsoever. So, Keith, are you saying, and did you get me to point to myself for this reason, to try to convince me that I can claim that I am God? Actually, I did. I did it on purpose. Because the truth, not requiring anyone's permission to exist, that is the truth. But if it generates a fear in you, and fear does, God does not live in that fear, that is the very space inside of yourself that is void of that very said truth. And is the space actually void of the love, because in that moment you're in the fear of it, you're not in the love of it, and it's also void of the real you. You're not present. Presence is here. That's where God lives. That's where you live. And if you live here, and you point to yourself, then God is the essence of who you are without the fear. So the first fear we have is the first block that stifles the soul's light from coming onto the earth. If you can liken God, the light inside of a projector. Same, the light inside of you is the bulb in that projector. You are the canister or the housing or the projector itself, and the light inside doesn't have any care about what you choose in your life. It's doing its job. It's just shining pure white light. It's called unconditional love, and it just shines and shines and shines, and it's all it does. It doesn't care what you do with it. it. doesn't judge you for it. Whatever filter you have in the way, fear, jealousy, anger, even your passions, your loves, every, it all gets projected on the screen, just like a movie theater. You can choose the movie. If you don't like the movie, if you like a horror flick, you have to change the film. So if I mention to you that you're a god, this is not from a blasphemous point of view or just utmost arrogance that you walk around with. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. It's about claiming your divinity. So you saw the connection and you pointed to self. You saw the connection that God is at your essence. Something that needs to be understood for spiritual development. If God is love, then we need to develop ourselves to the level within that is God. That's the path. That's the path everyone is on. No matter what religion you're from, if God is love, then we must expand and develop our love to the level that is God. And when we do that, as we do that, and until we do that, we become constantly open and aware, and we become connected, and we realize that you start having epiphanies, that it is, it's nothing other than me. There is nothing else. And you begin to consciously know that 
you're connected and you're getting closer and closer. And then the floodgate, the stargate, which I call the heart, I call it the stargate, and it begins to open. And you will not feel the disconnect in your life with other people, with your ability to do what you want, what you want to create in your life. If you can imagine, we're living in a world of right and wrong. The devil and the angel. And they just sit there and gripe. Now we know the devil is devilish. But are we absolutely sure that the angel on this shoulder is not the same devil in disguise? They're both incorrect choices. They are. We're not seeking duality. <laughs> we're already here. We don't have to eke out duality. We, we're in it. What we want is wholeness. Wholeness, the word holy is derived from the word wholeness. And that's what I mentioned earlier about the phoenix rising up through you, the Christ rising up through you. So again, this is the stargate. An analogy that I've been using for a while, and it's very, very powerful. So we're looking at Christ as if he was on a cross. So you see a, a vertical plane, heaven, coming down. And we see the earth plane going across. So he's crucified. Where do the two planes intersect? Right there. He showed you exactly where the star gate is. Through his metaphor to ascend. He made himself vulnerable. That's a very, very powerful place to live in is vulnerability. We'll talk a little more about that shortly. His time on the cross revealed something else, what I'm talking about. The stargate to God is the heart. Notice where the planes intersect. Something I'm very, very big on, and it's kind of ironic, <laughs> because I do it all the time in my professions, as I'm doing now with the radio show, Center of Light Radio, is talking. I understand that you've been in a cubicle all week, nine to five, if you're in the grind, God bless you if you live in a nine to five grind, it's not your passion. So Friday comes along and you want to hang out with some friends, have a couple of drinks or watch a movie, whatever it is you do that's, that's your fun, your joy. I understand the sharing that happens between two people who love each other. I get it. But you can always shorten the story. When someone asks you what you did today, you don't have to say, <laughs> I went to the grocery store, I turned on this aisle, bought some toilet paper, and then I turned on this aisle and I bought some rice, and then I did. You can just say I went to the store. It frees the mind. It gets, my mentor many years ago, he would kick me, seriously, kick me in my butt, kick me in my pants and say, Keith, stop telling long-winded stories. I said, what do you mean? He said, stop telling long-winded stories. He said, it's devastating to your energy, to your karma, and to your life. You get caught in the loop of telling the story. When we go into ooh-ooh-ah-ah ah, monkey-minded posture, that, that idea, monkey-minded, comes from back in Africa when they wanted to find water. They would put these nuts inside of a hole of a tree. Baboon would see him do that. He's monkey-minded. So he'd go in the tree, put his hand in the hole, grab those nuts. He doesn't have the common sense to realize if he would, and he gets caught because he can't get out. He doesn't have the common sense to realize that if he lets them go, he can free himself. So monkey mind, it has to do with our ability, or not inability, to grasp things and hold on to them and not let them go. And we carry it around and we think it's our life. So telling those stories, incessant talking, is detrimental. It's another aspect of spiritual development. In fact, the Chinese would whack you on the butt with a stick if they caught you out of line that way. They would. Again, I'm big on definitions. Very, very big. There is no escape. Union. Definition. An alliance for mutual benefit. The bringing together of two entities into a whole. So if we want to unify 
with God, we have to act that way. We have to be that way. There is no other way. You look at Jesus, God, union. Buddha, God, union. You, I, whoever, God, union. We have to become it. We have to unfold to the process. And the way we do that is we go straight to the superhighway or the supernatural highway to get there, which is located here. Love is not a mere sentiment of being in a relationship with a partner. That's not what love is. That's compatibility or incompatibility, depending on how your relationship is working out. Love is not that. Love is acceptance, allowance, and appreciation of all people and all, the th all things all the time. Keith, that sounds like a pretty big thing. To, it's not. It's your passion and your sincerity that will help open you up and plant this, these very, very simple ideas, these simple truths in your life, and you will become it. Acceptance, allowance, and appreciation. Doesn't mean you have to tolerate people's folly. It doesn't mean that at all. You can love people from a distance. You can. <laughs> This is uh, the divine principle. This is a conversation I had for eight, actually for a year, formal meditation. And one day in meditation, God, if you will, higher self, my soul, said, that's enough with all the meditating and pulling in information. Take the information you have, apply it to your life experience. Basically said, Keith, I don't want you to just recite a bunch of words. That's not, you're not living it. It, it would have fall to the ground like a castle in the air. It will have, have no life. It will have no punch. So I began to live these principles, and it was told to me to write down my thoughts, feelings, and life experiences and use it as the glue to put the information together to finalize the divine principle. And this is an aspect of uh, God speaking this particular um, excerpt. On our spiritual excursion, we shall cover the basic principles that are imperative for your growth. We will first form a solid foundation of understanding so that we can then move on the firm footing to achieve the peace that you seek. Once you know yourself as a chip off my old block, you will then see how you have always had the power to create the best life for yourself. Again, it goes back to claiming your divinity and responsibility, and you do not have to tolerate people's folly. It's about taking responsibility, because when you do take responsibility, you're no longer at the mercy of other people, and you're not a slave anymore. You're a master, or at least working on your mastery. Thought energy is the primal force that gives birth to life in all its forms. Just because you are not aware of your thoughts after they leave your head does not mean that your thoughts die. The moment you entertain any thought, the universe begins to work towards its manifestation. Everything is affected because all is one. The same body, the same being. For you to understand more fully that everything is of one energy, we must start with the soul and work our way outward. Know that in every human being, there are more bodies than just the physical one. And there is much more taking place than meets the eye. The spirit self or body, the spirit is the aspect that descends into a human body to partake of the human experience. It creates and governs all that is you. The spirit works in conjunction with your own awareness to bring about what is beneficial for you and your evolution so that you may one day embody the divine principle, God. We do that already, but we want to do this consciously. Hence the prophecy of heaven on earth. We have to become it. No one's coming to save you. I believe it. It's a trap. No one's coming to save you. We have to save ourselves. Now, there are people here to help, by all means, in exponential kinds of ways. You can bet on that. The mental self or body, this aspect provides you with the ability to reason. What I mean by reason is having the capability to consciously recognize what is right for you in any situation. It is the part of you that creates by thought and choice. What is right for you in any situation means you have the free will to choose it. And by all means, you can call it your opinion or your free will to do it. And that's great. But is this particular thing that you are thinking about, believing in, is it elevating you? Is it elevating you? It's just a very simple question. The emotional self or body. 
This aspect is denser than the spiritual and mental bodies and is responsible for physical expression. It influences all the actions and reactions triggered by your pleasure, pain, memories. Its enormous power brings what you are choosing into the certainty of being. The physical self or body, this is what most people think they are, the body. But really, your physical body is just the vehicle for the other bodies. It lets you move freely in the world while you work to align your personality with your soul. That place that you pointed to a while ago. That's where God at, is in you, your soul. It's the essence of who you are. It is your individuality. Your physical self allows you to come together with others to share life experiences. All these aspects make up the human entity. Even though they are different, they have one thing in common. They are all made up of energy. It is through such synergy that the physical, emotional, and mental bodies connect to the all-pervading spirit. You have an auric field around you. Probably four feet. This is the physical body. If I was to ask you, excuse me, let me get some water. If you used to walk out into a 98 degree temperature day, that's hot. You're 98.6 degrees. There's energy. People go, I'll keep that aura stuff. You're 98.6 degrees of energy. So you have this bioenergetic field all around you illuminating. And it's tickling the, the cosmic spider web and it's bringing everything into your life. Whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. That's what's happening. You are bringing all this. So this is the density. We have the mind. The mind is not here. That's your brain. This is your mind. This is all your mind. This is your mind made manifest. When there's an illness that happens in your life, it shows up in the body, but really the illness is in your mind. If you have a, a, a lung condition, the part of you that is your mental lung is imbalanced. That's why people who have nearsightedness, they can see near, but they can't see far because they probably have a fear of the future. People who can see the distance can't see close. They don't want to see what's being shown to them right in front of their face. Cancer is anger and hate. Broken arms or whatever that happens to your hands or your arms is the need to control. The inability to let go, to release. This is how. We either at ease or dis-ease, disease. So we are this big ball of energy. Planted on it, literally projecting itself from higher reality onto the earth. It may seem like you were born. Yeah, that is the process. Meditation, meditation. It's very integral to your spiritual growth. I've done it when I first started three times a day for many, many years. I don't do it formally per se anymore. I do sometimes. I do it mostly when I sleep, but I'm doing it right now. And when I mentioned to you early, er, when I do this presentation, you're going to see something change. I don't know if you've seen it yet. And this is not look for something special. That's not what I'm implying at all. I begin to plug into something. And I have notes, and I'm eventually going to get away from the screen entirely. And I'm starting to have dialogue with my source. I'm the spigot that's opening through this presentation to want to bring something through. Meditation is your highway to God. Prayer is talking. Meditation is listening. Listening. It's a two-sided conversation. What would be the point? We need to hear our divine parent. Meditation is that. Meditation will launch you through the ceiling of thinking. Devil, angel, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey-minded. Meditation will push you through that. And when you get there, you will know you're there. There's no doubt. Just like the truth doesn't need anyone's permission to exist. When you get to that place in meditation, you will emphatically know it, and no one can tell you any different. They will never change your mind. Meaning, when you meditate successfully, and you achieve that deafening, profound silence, it's, it's 
very ironic. It's very paradoxical. How can silence be deafening? When you do it right, you will find out. It's just amazing. It's so quiet, but it's so loud, and there's no movement. There's nothing happening in meditation when you achieve it. When you get through the ceiling of thought, there's nothing happening. It's quiet. Beyond what you can think. And then you get a little impression. And in that impression is information that is so encrypted, it's multi-layered. You may not know why you were just told to get up and go to the store. You may go to the store and follow the prompting, and nothing may happen whatsoever. But it may be what is the first step you need to take for a sequence of events to happen to bring to you what you brought into your meditation to ask God about some guidance in your life. Meditation is all that. It's integral to contacting the cosmic life stream. There is a flow in the universe. There is no non-flow. You're either in it or you're not. You're either in it or you're not. So how do I get in the flow? By following these models that I'm offering through this presentation. There's a flow and there's no, there is no non-flow. And you're either in it or not. So once you get into the cosmic life stream, the river of change, because you want to change, no one, I don't think any, well, some people do. I don't want to be complacent. I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to ever be the same. I want to keep growing. And I don't mean growing in my development. I want to grow. I want to feel this stuff to levels that I have. Once you are in the cosmic life stream, you don't have to turn yourself around with a paddle. You just put your oars down. The current will turn you. Down the river you go. Nothing you want is upstream. Nothing. There's nothing upstream you want. Only if, if you go upstream, you will only find yourself as a salmon to be eaten by a bear. You don't want, there's nothing you want upstream. It's all downstream. It's all downstream. <laughs> Years ago, this is pretty powerful. It hit me like a lightning bolt when this took, transpired. Years ago, I did um, a band rehearsal with uh, some of my friends. We had a rock band called Thunder. And it was time for me to go home. So I walked to my truck. On my way to the truck, <laughs> at that time in my life, I had a pretty intense fear of dogs. So on the way to my truck, I seen a big picket, a wooden fence, big red sign, bold letters, beware of dog. And I went into that mode. See, so you notice what, even though I'm pretending, how and what it did to my posture, my level of awareness, it shut it all down. Where's big dog? Because they're already saying, Mr. Keith Blanchard, you need to be aware because we're already putting a big sign on the yard, on the fence, to tell you, look out, possible trouble. So I'm looking for dog, kind of walking like this towards my truck, and something stopped me. And it's my passion to walk through my fears immediately. I walk through my fears. I do it all the time. Because on the other side of fear is paradise. On the other side of fear is who you are. The fear is just in the way. It's a big wall. When you walk through your fears, they change. So I stopped, and I looked at the sign. It says, beware of dog. I heard God talk to me clear as day. Clear as day. It said, Keith, turn the sign around. Turn the sign around. Look at the sign again and then take it in. Turn it around. So beware of dog became be aware I'm God. Beware means caution, possible trouble, look out, look out. Be aware means to open up and see. <laughs> Instead of me shutting down and not see. And dog backwards, D-O-G, is God, G-O-D. I, I had a conscious Awareness shift and that dog and that sign and that experience opened me up for the rest of my life. Talking about reality. How do we know what's the right reality or the reality? The higher the lower. That's the better words. Not the good or the bad, but the higher or lower implying vibrational tone. Spirit says, your, your ability to differentiate between the two is what makes one more real than the other. Water the weed or water the plant. 
The one you decide is the closer representation of me, spirit, is the higher reality. The other is more likely to be the illusion or the lower reality. But keep in mind, this is only relative because the decision between higher and lower can vary from person to person. So how do I know what is the higher reality between the higher and the lower? Because if it varies between person to person, there is a third reality. And that third reality, the way you can tell what that... Because let's say my friend that I met here today, he has an opinion or a reality. And I have a, a reality, and they're different. So which one is higher? His is higher for him, and mine is higher for me. That is, a, that is true. But the truth is another level that exists that says you can tell that you're in the, in the reality by the level of joy it brings into your life, just by pondering the thought. If it lights you on fire and you feel blissful and warm inside, that's the reality. Your, different, your ability to differentiate, differentiate between the two is what makes one more real than the other. The one that you decide is the higher or lower, and we just went through that. But keep in mind this is only relative because it is the different, the, excuse me, because the decision between higher and lower can vary from person to person. And even though you deem something to be either real whew, or illusory, do not lose sight of the real truth that God is the dreamer behind both. Remember this. And the you that sleeps with your eyes open will awaken to truly see my reality. Remember, my reality is for those who really want it. Yes, the road is a long one, and it will take time, but that will eventually lead you to eternity. And when you get there, all of your struggles will be forgotten. Another integral component to spiritual awakening, radical transformation, is clarity, explosive clarity. Being clear. Getting out of ooh, ooh, ah, ah. So what I would like you to do, uh, I was considering drawing, but my artistic ability and penmanship is terrible. <laughs> Imagine the most beautiful diamond, flawless. And I want you to place it right there in your eye. Third eye. Whenever you want to create something in your life, whenever you have a question to spirit, whatever it is you want to do, you sit yourself in there. You don't sit, will it work? Just put yourself in there. It's an intention to be clear. Put the diamond also in your heart. Explosive clarity is very, very important because if you're clouded, even though your intentions are good to have a good life, it doesn't work that way. Your ability to be clear or not will affect the cosmic tapestry. It's important to be clear. Where does my voice happen? Where are you processing it within you? Where are you processing looking at this wall within you? Where does it, everything happen from the outside world take place? Within you. From whence did you come? Chew on that for a moment. Just ask yourself, where did it come from? And I don't mean your mother and father. <laughs> what is this energy that was given a name at birth? Chew on that. What is this energy? Where did it come from that was given a name at birth? Did you have an identity before you were born? Why were you born? Who are you now? And where are you going? Powerful questions. Very simply. You take these questions inside into the rabbit hole. 
it opens up. I live and expand it. As of recently, I can feel myself changing. I can feel myself expanding. So all this happens within you. It's who you are. It's who you are. So when I asked the question, <laughs> what is this energy that was given a name at birth? Basically, God broke a piece off itself and stuck it in the body. And before indoctrination, religion, rules, rights, wrongs, peers, government, familial, familial parents, society, authority. It's like taking this white slate and just start throwing mud clogs at it. And it just starts sticking everywhere. And then we go into ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey mind it. We get out of all the purity that we were as children. And it all goes away. This is the importance of getting clear. It was beaten out of us. Other things were beaten into us. People think God is a man. God is not a man. Man can become unified and conscious with God. But God is not a man. So we're talking about clarity. Explosive clarity. A blind man once said, you do not need sight to climb Mount Everest. Instead, you need vision. Vision. What is vision? Using your eyes. No, 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 no. Vision is greater than that. That's seeing. This is seeing. Vision is something else. You can close your eyes and envision something. So vision, like the, the poetry says, climbing Mount Everest requires vision, not sight. So once we get out of the muddled, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey mind, once we begin to pull that stuff away, we will have so many spiritual faculties at our disposal. But it requires you to master the mind to use it as a tool instead of it me using you and making you a slave. And it requires not to fight the mind. You fight the mind, you watering the, the weed. You have to step back from the mind from a, into a higher place and see it and let it chatter and watch it chatter with itself, the devil and the angel. Watch them griping at each other, trying to convince you, the one in the middle, to buy into the illusion. And when you see it from that perspective, We've all heard the cliche or this expression, in the light of awareness. So if all that stuff that lives in the mind is lower vibrational and dark, just by becoming aware of it, changes it. There's nothing else to do. Nothing, literally. If I was to take off that light and light a pin flashlight in this room, what happens to the dark? It dissipates. In fact, the darkness around the, the, the beam of the light becomes the light. So in the light of awareness, instead of fighting the mind and its bickering and its chattering and its incessant mind noise, back off and watch it. And it'll dissipate on its own because you're now aware of it. Oh, wow, that's not me. This is me. I'm the hyper-expanded person, being. All right, y'all. I'm going to get down to some opening up you up. If everyone would, please stand up. I want you to experience something. What you are going to experience is, to a greater degree, the real you. Could I borrow you? What is your name, dear? Mary. Mary? Um, let me put you stand right there for me. And if you guys, since I'm on work with Mary, y'all look at this way. But Mary, if you would, please. I want you to, to help you experience who you are to a greater degree. If God is infinite aware, the more we make ourselves aware, the more we can begin to feel that presence, that connectivity. And if God itself is a miracle, we want miracles, we all want miracles in our life, we all want synchronicity and alignments. And serendipities, we all want those fun, amazing things. When they happen, they open you up. But I'm going to open you up. Instead of them happening to open you up, I'm going to open you up so you can have them happen, so you can see them. 
Because the closer we get to God, the, we thought this was seeing our whole life. Oh, I could see pretty good. We moved the, the fog and the veil. Wow, this is what seeing is? This is what vision is? So the more we can see God, obviously it makes sense that miracles just start popping out like fireflies. So if you would, um, focus on me and don't take your eyes off of me. Just use your awareness to take me in. Or this for you, this in. Don't turn your head away from anything whatsoever. As you are gazing into this experience, in to this experience with your awareness, keep your eyes on me, but do you hear the sound of that apparatus or whatever this right here? You hear it happening, right? Okay. Do you, are you aware of the taste in your mouth? Okay. Are you aware of that light without looking at it? Yes. Okay. So we can, you can expand yourself. But notice, as I said, are you looking at me? Your awareness came here. Can you hear the noise? Your awareness went there. Can you see the light? Your awareness went there. Now, you're about to be opened up. Take all that in at the same time. The person next to you, take it in. You feel it. Do you feel that? Do you feel yourself open? Do you feel yourself expanded and stretched out to where I can look at this pad, I see you here, I'm, I'm aware, I am consciously aware. Thank you. That is open. Ah, Keith, that's a little parlor trick. No, no, no. When you work out, y'all can sit down, thank you very much. When you start, when you go to a gym and you want to work with weights, you start with small weights. And we're going to the gym to work with weights is the idea to start small and keep expanding your muscle mass. What I just gave you was a 25-pound weight. And very soon you're going to be lifting 500 pounds at a time like on a Schwarzenegger. So I gave you a glimpse. You can see with your ears. You can see with your feeling base. Because it's all contained right here in the package you know as your body, as you. Every fiber of your being. And when you begin to activate that field, wow, something will happen through you, not to you. And it will begin to affect everyone you're around. So everything I'm telling you through this presentation, after I just gave you a glimpse, is to keep you in that experience. Until that experience for you becomes second nature, habit, or default. And when you climb that rung of the ladder, and now you feel that things are getting a little stagnant, you keep practicing awareness expansion. You keep lifting the weight. The muscle gets bigger and bigger. I can tell you, like I mentioned before, in the last year or so, my awareness is growing. It's not a bragging point for Keith, but it's a way of imparting to you I mean, you can see that I'm sitting here telling the truth. This is not some made-up crap. Your awareness expands. Miracles will become visible to you because you're aware. You can see. You can intuit. You can feel. They, be they will begin to pop out for you like fireflies at night. I got here tonight. I was supposed to be a person filming this event, the whole fair, and I was going to do that. <laughs> I got a phone call saying, Keith, don't worry about it. We hired a professional. I said, well, great. I don't have to do it. Which I didn't mind doing. As soon as I walk in today, the lady comes to me. She goes, I went through all these booths today. And yours intrigued me. So how's that? She says, you're talking about transformation. I'm actually filming a, we are, whoever we are, are filming a, a documentary movie. She's backed by people in Hollywood, Morgan Freeman, and all bunch of people. And she said, would you like to be in a documentary movie? And I was supposed to be the one filming it. So my point of telling you this is not yay Keith is to validate that these kinds of alignments are happening to me all the time. And it's your passion, and it's your wanting of them that will make them stick out. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Awareness, 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 awareness. I could say this 30 more minutes, and it does, it, it's not enough to bring or press home the lesson that awareness is utmost important to spiritual development. Instead of just being aware in your head, do it in this moment, very simple. Just shift your awareness in your heart. Be in that space, live in that space, just be aware. You're doing it right now, I know you are, and you know that I know you're doing it. 
How can I just shift my awareness as if I'm sitting down here? Because you are. That's what you're doing. If you're in a situation, you have a tough time, all you have to do is place your hand over your heart. You don't have to do anything else. Just place your hand over your heart. Your words will get really, really clear, very articulate. And not only that, the words you were using will have a different tone. Even if you use the same word than before, if you use the same word with your hand not on your heart, it changes the game. This is the stargate. It's the floodgate. It's where you reside. <laughs> we talked about the hand being an extension of the mind. How we hold on to things. Things are hurting you in your life. It's an electrical wire. <clears throat> Holding on to is like an electrical wire. As long as you hold it, you get shocked. You let it go. It stops. What happens in the letting go and why people can't let go of said scenarios is one, yes, I do understand it shocks when I hold it because I'm experiencing it now and it's kicking my butt. You would think common sense would just let it go, but they can't. One reason they can't is because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they do. But if they only realize that in the doing so, you get not only what you want, but you create an experience and an opening. Your hands are full. Nothing can be put in it. So when you open your hands, you open your life, you open your heart, you open yourself, you're an empty vessel. Being a vessel. And so the reason they can't is because they're afraid. But also... On some level, they know that if I let go of this, there's going to be no movement happening, and it feels very, very weird. It feels very, very funky because it's an issue of trust. If you can liken control or the inability or the want to let go as a wheel that moves in your chest this way, and it moves, and the more you control your life, the faster it moves. If you control fanatic, it's just on race car speed, right? So it's a wheel that moves in your chest this way. And the more you begin to relinquish control, you will slow down. Heart rate stops. That's that funky place. That's that very weird place where it feels like someone's pulling a rug out from under you. But hang tight. Because the next thing that's going to happen is the wheel's going to start moving this way. And then you're going to feel yourself in the cosmic life stream sailing downriver. And you don't have to do anything. The current will push you along. <laughs> Did you know that if something of a great magnitude happens in your life, even on a lower level, but something that is very, very painful and detrimental uh, it just, it got you. Whatever it is, someone died or you got fired or someone upset you, whatever it is. There is a way that you can come clear and free from it, ever sticking to you immediately. Radical transformation. Something just happened and it got you. And it's got you good. And it's going to hold on to you for a very long time. Very, very long time. Situation, right? Here I go. Why would I do that? Well, Keith, you're going to get, you're going to hyperventilate. No, 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 no. Hyperventilate means you, don't, you can't breathe. You're breathing on purpose. You're breathing. God breathed life into man. God is life. So if breath is the catalyst from which God flows through our body and it's the light and you're standing in situation and darkness, the energy won't stick. It will dissipate. You may have, for the moment, the grief if you lost a loved one, the pissed offness if you lost a job or someone did whatever. It's for the moment. But I'm telling you, when you breathe into the situation, it can't stick. There is no Velcro. It's, it'll just slide down off of you. Off of you. But if you let it fester, it will put its hooks in you and mire you into the illusion that it's the truth. 
then you got more work to do. So I strongly support that when something happens, breathe into it, into it, with the intentions of dissipating, and it will not put its hooks in you. From the divine principle. This is spirit talking to me again. Sometimes I would meditate between 12 noon to 6 at night, sometimes 9 at night, 9 at night. I wouldn't be in formal meditation. I would meditate in the form of just listening. Like I am with you right now, I'm listening. I'm hyper-listening. I'm creating an opening for this information to come through so I can share with you. But I would sit there for 6 to 9 hours. I would not leave my computer except to use the restroom, get something to eat, or water, whatever it is I need to do, or run an errand. But I was that serious about it. And so this is what came through in one day in particular, told to me. Now close your eyes and think of something that is really troubling you. Just breathe in and out evenly for a few minutes to fall deeper into yourself. Take notice of any of those negative feelings that come up. Then with your last exhale, release your troublesome thought to the universe and listen carefully. And I asked a question to Spirit. It's, oh, Spirit said, do you hear it? And I said, hear what? The soft voice of the soul whispering its wisdom into your heart. And I say, I've been able to do this before when I've meditated on some issues. But I can't seem to consciously make the connection on this one. Then you must go even deeper to discover where your demon or demons dwell. When you find it, it will probably look like a scared child cowering in a corner. But do not attempt to offer it pity. Do not be fooled. For it can and will take advantage of you. If you must, use another intense visualization to yank your demon or demons out of your subconscious. Then offer to the light of consciousness and watch it melt like all the vampires you have seen in the movies. When you begin to see through all of your illusions, the beauty will, that has always been there will curve back within you. And suddenly, God will be present for you at a conscious level. What that means is, if I was to take this microphone and put it by this speaker, it creates a regeneration cycle. It curves within itself. The sound that goes into this mic goes out of the speaker back into the mic, out of the speaker, and it creates a loop. That's why you hear bands and they got stuff loud, you hear that noise, it's called feedback. But even so, even though that noise is not pleasing, there is an expansion that happens, because that sound goes from there to that speaker to there, there and it gets bigger and louder. So there's an expansion of energy that happens. So what was said in this last excerpt was, when you begin to do this, you will curve back within yourself and suddenly God will be present for you at a conscious level. I say, what about my future lessons? When something happens that you know could potentially be with you for a long time, I suggest that you heed and heal it in the very moment what we just shared. Please share with me how. Um, let me keep let me move forward a little bit. Ah, what I said earlier. What you perceive as terrible is not the reality of God, but it's the illusion created by you. What I am saying is that the mind can never open up enough to take God in. So you must open your heart in order to move out of any illusion and into my reality. But how will I know when I'm there? It's a very honest question. How will I know I'm there? Because I'm digging this. I'm digging the experience and the messages I'm getting. I'm loving it. So I'm going, well, I like this idea, but how will I know when I'm there? You will know your heart centered. When you begin to see the world made up, the hue, made up of hues that you could have not seen before, everything will be different to you as if illumined. You will know you have become heart-centered, as I said earlier, the truth about the truth of what reality you're in. You'll know it's the truth. You will know that you're becoming heart-centered when you notice that joy is residing within you full time. Freedom is what every being in the universe yearns for. And your freedom lies on the other side of your fear. You can't go over your fear. You can't go around it. You can only go through it. You can only go through your fear. It's so scary. Do it anyway. 
We think that being afraid protects us from whatever it is that we're afraid of. That is the epitome of the illusion. In fact, it's a big juicy carrot that's dangling in front of your face. When you bite it, it'll bite back twice as hard, twice as big, and it will kick your ass. It will. Again, scenario, if, I, if you used to bring fear in a room with a dog, it's not the dog, it's the person. Because if you like dogs, you over here going, come here, born a dog's, dog's tail's wagging, and, and someone else over here is afraid to That dog does not trust you. Because you're projecting your script onto the dog who is just a mirror of yourself. So your fear is, does not protect you. It throws you directly into the trap. So when you catch yourself being afraid, you have more clarity and response ability. So it does not work out in a situation that you wish you didn't react to by using said fear. You have more responsibility and you're open and you're not ooh, ooh, ah, ah, monkey minded. Attention, intention is everything. Wake up in the morning. Eat your breakfast, brush your teeth, walk out the door, walk all the way to your car, get to your job, nine to five, perform all your duties, all your tasks, go back home, settle in, check your Facebook, eat some supper, prepare for sleep, and then pack. Do this every day, all day long. Whether you know it or not, it is intention. And I bet after, out of all things I just named, hypothetical, metaphorical person I just created has no idea that they were intending. And all of it is intention. Conscious or not, aware or not, you are intending. And God, the unconditional wishing tree, who loves you unconditionally, so much so he will grant you everything you asked for. Everything. Whether you know you're asking or not. Your whole life is a prayer. Whether you know that you're praying or not. You are asking the cosmic consciousness that loves you so much, it says, it'll say, here you go. Because it knows you can never hurt yourself. Because if it did, it would be that strict parent that would stop you from doing so. But it doesn't. It lets you. Because you can't hurt yourself because you're not your body. And when we choose to come back, the spirit will kick you in the pants and give you a little motivation. And you'll be home in a split. So fear is in the way. Big wall. We have to realize to not bite that carrot. And take a step back. Become hyper aware. Be, beware of dog or be aware of God. It's just a shift in perception. Intention, intention, intention. Attention. Intention is energy. Attention is focus. And we do it all the time. When we get conscious about it. Attention. Yet another aspect of spiritual awakening. I always say you can water the weed or water the plant. Whichever one you give your attention to is the one that will grow. One of my favorite attributes, this is where I start to move energy in this room right now. <laughs> one of my favorite attributes of spirituality is passion. Ask Rob, ask Linda, anyone who knows me in this room. When I do something, there is no way it's not going to happen. And I will push for it if it takes a thousand years. There's just no way it's gonna, not going to happen. It may take a thousand years, but if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it until it happens. I have a fire in me. I have a drive in me. And I hope that by the time we come to the end of this, bro this broadcast and on the radio, I can still set fire in you. There's a fire that burns in me. And as I said, when I create something, I want to do something. There's no way it's not going to happen. Passion would be the active. It's the power. It's to get in there and roll up your sleeves kind of thing, right? Ready to get your elbows and your fingers dirty and get in there and do it. Sincerity would be the passive. It's that soft spot inside. It's that soft spot that says, I really mean it. I'm serious about this. Those two aspects are the same coin with two different sides of the coin. Passion is the fire, and sincerity is your grandmother's bosom. The place where you lay and you fall. Male and female energies, masculine, feminine, divine energies. And when you put those together, you have 
balance in equal proportions, the phoenix to Christ, the lotus flower, begins to rise through the murky water of our stuff. Humility. I call this humility the highway to God. It's the highway to God. Jesus washed the feet of Thomas, the one he knew that was going to betray him. Why would he do that? Any human being would not do that. <laughs> Why would I want to take care of this person who's going to nail me to a cross? Or help me get nailed to a cross? Why would he do that? Humility. He's divine. Said the life of Mother Teresa. Why would Jesus tell, I think it was Peter, uh, put your sword away after he cut the soldier's ear off? Why would he do that? They were coming to take his life. You would think they would ask him to protect him, but he didn't. Humility is the doorway to God. You know, when you, when you see Tibetan Buddhist monks, they're like this. They're humble. They are of service. When you're of service, people often say, you're going to help God. God doesn't need help. What you need to do is help humanity. When you help humanity, you are serving. And when you serve, power gets put in your lap because you're responsible. So the universe says, I like what you're doing because you're open. You're open to serve. It's because you're open to serve, you, be, you get served. The other is vulnerability. Becoming vulnerable as Christ on the cross. Or finding something in your life that he's just nervous about being open to. What is it that's going to happen to you? If you open up, what? You're going to die? We're all going to die. Nobody gets out of here alive. We're dying now. And you're dying now. This talk is changing you on some level. An aspect of you is dying. And when you walk through that threshold of being afraid to open your heart and open yourself up to the bliss that so wants to fill you inside, make yourself vulnerable. Be it with a partner. Make yourself vulnerable with people. Open yourself up. Vulnerability, humility, sincerity, and passion. These four components will. Wow. They will light you on fire. And watch what begins to happen to you. Because I've been doing this so long, things do happen a lot. But I'm used to it. If this is not happening to you and you apply what I offer here today, it's, it's not going to stop you. Wow, 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 wow. And I don't mean it's about stuff. We all like stuff. I like stuff. I like having fun. But I'm talking about substance. Sustenance. And last on the list is presence. When you practice awareness expansion, you're looking at me, your eyes are on me, fixed on me, and your awareness. And now use your awareness to see the walls inside of you. See the lights above your head, the taste in your mouth, the feeling of the temperature on your skin. You feel that? Yeah? yeah? You're open. You take all the things that I've offered here, it will become your default. When you can live in that space, and I do it all the time now, and I'm grateful, thank you. At first, you will start feeling something that is present with you. God, if you will. This is how it felt to me when I wrote the Divine Principle. I felt the presence, and then it started to show up more. So I kept writing. It started to show up more and got deeper and fatter and bigger and thicker. And I started feeling the presence. When you begin to open yourself up this way and live in this space, you will realize that you're no longer feeling the presence. You're the one that's present. You're the one present with yourself. And that's the gift. That's the present. Is to be present. And then life's gifts will be handed to you. Monday night? Awesome. I do it every Monday night. Okay. Uh, Central time, 5 o'clock, uh -huh. lasts an hour. And it's broadcast everywhere? All over the world. In fact, we just teamed up with iHeartRadio. Awesome. Uh, three or so weeks ago. Inception Radio Network did, which is the station, uh -huh. internet platform that I use for my show. Uh -huh. So the visibility went from, before iHeartRadio, from 3 million listenership. It's probably, next time I get my stats, it's probably off the chart. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. It's awesome. Yes. Thank you. Definitely. So, we did the Radical Transformation presentation a little while ago. How did you think it went? 
you really spoke to me. I've never did really. Yeah, I've never um, meditated. Yeah. You know, but a lot of the things that you were talking about about energy and light and coming from the universe and where we came from and it really spoke to me. What we're made of. You know, I've made got, of light. Made of light and water and stardust and you know, so it really spoke to me. Somebody Love else it. thinks the same thing that I do. Oh, amazing. So I liked it. I'm glad I was able to be a validation for you. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. I've been doing this so long, it's second nature now. And like I said, I'm not ever trying to convince you anybody. I'm just trying book. to nudge you into a way of seeing things a little differently. Yeah. I never would have put you in that role. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good. I'm glad there was a little yeah. uh, surprise factor. I think the fair was a success in the in sense of that people becoming more and more aware. <laughs> as in radical transformation awareness, but they're coming more and more aware of this sort of lifestyle and how beneficial it is to one's life, getting out of the trouble, getting out of the trouble-mindedness, just doing things that are real, right, and important. I think the whole world is waking up. In fact, I'm sure of it. Everybody's looking for something. They may not know what that something is, but you could see it in their eyes. They're starving for something. And I think that search is leading them inwardly and this is the causal universe, and this is the reflective universe. So that which lives in me creates worlds and universes. Boy, when you ride that train, all you have to do is show mere intention, and it begins to manifest itself. And the trick of spirituality to manifest your life is really not to do anything except use your own will. Just by simple will, Jesus was at the wedding, there was no wine. What's the first thing he does? He has a thought, we need wine. Second thing is, he has a feeling, which is love, which is the power. And he brings about on the earth plane. He said also, uh, you will do more than I do. You will do what I do, if not more. How is that even possible? How can you do more with Jesus? But yet again, he's the one that said it. So we automatically get thrown into a conundrum of what the truth is. So the point of me telling you this is, when we get to a space of aligning ourselves with God, cosmic life stream, Mere intention brings about what it is you're trying to pull into your life. And that's the importance of getting clear, getting the stuff out the way, the, all the muddleness from around the mind. Because whether we know it or not, whether we're clear or not, whether we believe it or not, everything happens just by our very being on this planet. So I wish you lots of bliss, lots of love, lots of light. Take care, see you soon. Forgive me, what is your name again, sir? Chris. Chris. You just moved here from Connecticut. Connecticut, that's yeah. right. I'll be on my way from Honolulu for the show. And who am I addressing this to? Uh, addressing to my mother, Mary, Mary Jane. Mary. Mary Jane. She was the Mary one Jane. Just, uh, worked on. Oh next wow! To me. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's all. Uh, I have to grab my own copy in the future. I'm sure we'll be uh, crossing paths again. I hope so. See inside, see the light and more See inside, see the light I wonder do you realize See inside